Hey guys, welcome to another tier ranking, and I just want to start off by saying, rest in peace, Matthew Perry. You are one of my all-time favorite comedic TV characters of all time as Mr. Chandler Bang. I know you did a lot of things with your life. Uh, your life wasn't all about just movies and television shows. You were a strong advocate of getting people sober off of their alcoholism and drug addiction. And I know Matthew Perry always wanted to be remembered for helping people with those addictions. So remember Matthew Perry for not just being Chandler Bang or an actor, but him advocating for addiction. So I thought I'd celebrate Matthew Perry, his life, by talking about his movies and shows which he does not have a lot of. When you really look at his whole filmography, he played in some shows, played in very few movies. He does not have a lot. There's a couple I have not seen, but for the most part, I've seen pretty much like 95% of the stuff he's played in, whether it's movies or shows. And even the shows I've watched, I didn't watch them all. I only watched a couple episodes here and there and stuff, but... It's not very uh, hard to do a tier ranking for Matthew Perry, but I wanted to do it because I was a fan. I enjoyed him, and I, I loved him on one of my all-time favorite shows. So let's get to it. And, yeah, it's tier ranking. We all, you all know how tier rankings go. The S is the best. F is the worst. And it's all my opinion. And I need to start off with friends because this is the reason why this tier ranking exists. It's for friends. This is what put him on the map. This is what we all remember Matthew Perry for as Chandler Bing and Friends. Friends is one of my all-time favorite television shows ever. If anyone asks me what my favorite show is, I would probably usually say Friends. Like, there are shows I think are, like, the best shows. Like, I think Game of Thrones, the first four seasons of Game of Thrones is the greatest piece of television I've watched. I think The Sopranos is one of the greatest shows. I love Firefly, too, because that means something to me. The Simpsons means something to me. But the but Friends is a show I've watched the most in my life. Every few months, I binge all ten seasons of Friends. And this is not just, like, a yearly thing. This is, like, a every couple months thing. I've seen every episode of Friends ugh, so many times. 60, 70 times. I know the episode's off by heart. I know the characters. I love the characters. I've been a fan since I've been 8 years old. It's been a long time, and it, the show means something to me and to many people in the whole world. And I just love the show. And when it comes to Matthew Perry's career, it will always be the show he'll be remembered for. And I'm going to talk about the reunion because I think the reunion is an it's a great reunion for the HBO. It's sad watching because he died just a year after, but it, it's it's a great reunion because it's good seeing them back and it's uh, good to see how what what the show meant for so many people around the world. And it's really nice to watch, and it's cool seeing them like play the the apartment game again and seeing like cameos like seeing Tom Selleck and Thomas Lennon and uh, we get to see Janice and we get to see uh, Ross and Monica's mom and dad. The only thing I didn't like actually was James Corden hosting it. That was kind of annoying. But other than that, it's a great reunion show. I actually like the reunion show more than the Fresh Prince reunion show, which I still enjoyed. All right. Before I get to the movies, let's talk about the shows he did. He did the show with Thomas Lennon called The Ah Couple. It wasn't very good. It, it was literally like a modern take on uh, The Ah Couple. Honestly, there's only one Odd Couple. That's Jack Lennon and Walter Matthew. But I was up to watching it because I was a fan of Matthew Perry and I loved The Odd Couple. I will even say The Odd Couple 2 with Jack Lennon and Walter Matthew is kind of funny. <laughs> So I'm a fan of Odd Couple and Matthew Perry, so I gave the show, like, five episodes, and just wasn't that funny. It wasn't, like, the worst show ever, the worst comedy ever, it wasn't, like, cringe, it just wasn't funny, and it wasn't enjoyable to watch. So I just kind of stopped watching it, and so it goes for D for me. Same with Go On, I just, I watched some episodes when it came on, it just didn't do anything for me, so, sadly... Sadly, his shows that weren't friends didn't do very well. The other got canceled, or just people didn't care to watch them. So, there's that. 
17 again. 17 again is okay. It, it, it's it's a movie with so much predictability and formula. It's a classic like body like body de aging movie like thirteen going on thirty and stuff like that or Freaky Friday or something. It, it's it's a formula we've seen done many times. There's nothing new this movie brings. I actually think the best part of the movie is Zac Efron. I think he's very funny in the movie when he can be. Thomas Lennon, man. I think Thomas Lennon and Matthew Perry were, like, best friends or something, because he's in a lot of things Matthew Perry did. Matthew Perry is only in the beginning and the ending, and he's, he's fine. Like, I, I, he's he's funny as this grouchy dad, and but I think Zac Efron really makes the movie. I think the movie's good because of Zac Efron, because without Zac Efron, the movie is really bad, because anytime Zac Efron isn't making silly dad jokes... It's really predictable and kind of stupid. <laughs> and just not a good movie. So, yeah. It's it's watchable and enjoyable because of Zac Efron. Fool's Rush In. I actually think Fool's Rush In is very underrated with uh, him and Selma Hayek. It's literally about a, like a businessman who gets a job in Vegas. And he falls in... He, well, he doesn't fall in love with her. He just meets Selma Hayek and... They have a one-night stand, and she meets him again a few months later and says she's pregnant, and they rush in and get married right away and try to be a family and try to learn about each other as as the, she progresses through pregnancy and stuff. And as they find out more about each other, they're thinking maybe are they meant to be together, and they have doubts, but then they find out they are a perfect match. It's a really great movie. I think it's funny. I think it's a unique idea for a romantic comedy. I really enjoy it. I think it's I think it's fun. And, yeah, I think it's underrated, actually. So <laughs> This is The Whole Nine Yards. The Whole Nine Yards is also pretty funny. Bruce Willis and him work off Bruce Willis' is Jimmy the Tulip. And Matthew Perry is, like, this very neurotic... Very, like, paranoid dentist who's, like, scared of everything. It's Matthew Perry is pretty funny. It's just about a dentist who uh, lives next door to a hitman, and he wants to find a way to get rid of him, and it's funny. Um, also, fun fact, because he did this, Bruce Willis had to do episodes of Friends because he lost a bet with Matthew Perry. Um, the whole ten yards is awful. Terrible. I have no idea why they did a sequel to The Whole Nine Yards. The Whole Nine Yards never did a sequel. And there's not even a reason why it's called The Whole Ten Yards, just because it's a sequel, I guess. But it's really bad. <laughs> like, really bad. Also, uh, Serving Sarah, my, probably the worst movie he made about this guy who's a process server, and he tries to serve her, but then she offers him, like, a million dollars to serve her husband instead. And then they just go on this really unfunny, really awkward, and really not enjoyable journey together and Matthew Perry and um oh my god what's her name um fuck what's her name from the chick from Austin Powers the two of them have no chemistry and just it's it's so awkward to watch <laughs> so is numb I, I watched this movie years ago and I thought it was really dreadful <laughs> Then we got Almost Heroes, this very older movie with him and Chris Farley. It's okay, it's very silly, very slapsticky, and very much of its time. Yeah, that's probably the best way to say it. It's of its time. Then there's Three to Tango, which I actually, I don't hate. I think it's it's a, it's a fun, kind of cute rom-com. Definitely a lot more raunchier, more darker, and I really enjoy Matthew Perry and uh, Neff Campbell in the movie. Neff Campbell is always an actress. I have always I was always wondering why she never did more movies, because I've always enjoyed her as an actress, but eh, we got what we could from her. <laughs> so yeah, obviously, friends are on his that, that's, that's just Matthew Perry in a nutshell, man. For the B tier... I'll go Fool's Rush in, then 3 to Tango, C tier, 17 again, and Almost Heroes. Yep, yep. And then F tier, we'll go Numb, Hold on Yards, Serving Sarah. Very easy tier ranking. Just wanted to do it to celebrate the memory of Mr. Matthew Perry. Rest in peace. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite thing he 
he has done movie wise, TV wise. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.